coming up on Network Africa. Rwanda's Supreme Court rules in favor of a third term bid for President Paul Kagame. Widowed South Sudanese women face an uncertain future as they seek help in raising their children. Super Eagles goalkeeper Vincent Ayama quits international football. Hello and welcome to Network Africa. I am Adeshawa Josh. Well, feelings were mixed in Kigali, the capital of Rwanda today, as the Supreme Court announced the ruling favoring the third term bid of President Paul Kagame, which could allow him run the country for another seven years. The court rejected an attempt by the main opposition party to block changes to the country's constitution. Though these constitutional changes must pass a referendum, there is reportedly little chance of them failing because Mr. Kagame is believed to be in control of the media and the parliament. But more importantly, because President Kagame is very popular as a nation builder after the 1994 genocide. This is a trend that the continent has been witnessing as some African leaders continue to seek an extension of their term in office, as seen in Burundi, Congo, and now Rwanda. Many say Gambia could be next. In the meantime, the Supreme Court says all depends on the opinions of the people. Now let's give you a few facts about President Paul Kagame. He was born in October 1957 in Gitarama, Prefecture, Rwanda. He went to an open university in London, had a diploma in professional management and business studies, was married to Jeanette, in 1989. He belongs to the Tutsi ethnic group. He's been president since 2003 and the main opposition party is the Democratic Green Party there in Rwanda. Joining us live on Network Africa is a Rwandan human rights lawyer, Gatete Keving. He joins us from Belgium. Thank you so much, Gatete, for making our time to speak to us on Network Africa. Thank you. Now, you, you have written extensively about Rwandan politics. Explain to us the implications of the ruling of the Supreme Court. So what the ruling does is that it sets a precedent that it, the Rwandan parliament uh, has capacity to propose an, a referendum on the constitution. And actually the ruling also establishes that it is at legal to, uh, to amend Article uh, 191, which, which is the article that uh, fixes term limits for presidents. So, I mean, the changes required in this constitution to make the Supreme Court ruling effective must pass through a referendum. Do you see it passed by the parliament? I'm Absolutely. In fact, the parliament did already vote massively. There's only one abstention uh, and one, one, uh, one, one abstention and two people who are not present, uh, who, who did not vote in favor of the launch of the process to, to suggest a referendum. Because a referendum is a process, right? They start by establishing what the content of the referendum bill that they will propose to the people will be. And so they have massively... Uh, voted in favor of that referendum process to happen. So I expect them to also pass uh, the bill that fought for the referendum. Now, if the parliament is deciding or appears to be favoring this move, does that mean this is what the people want, the people of Rwanda? Do they want President Kagame to run for another term and become president for another seven years? Well, Numbers show 3.8 million people petitioned uh, to ask President Kagame to run for president. 
Now, these are people from all walks of life in society who have been, some people have, who have who, who been mobilized by others who thought it was in their interest uh, for President Kagame to stay in power. And so interest groups, cooperatives of women and professional cooperatives, politicians, business people, uh, students, lecturers, uh, church goers have all mobilized to ask for President Kagame to stay in power. So in f what we were actually discussing as uh, people who are involved in the whole, who are observing this whole process, were wondering whether it was even necessary to do a referendum because the majority of the voters in Rwanda have already signed the petition saying we want the constitution to change and then we want President Kagame to run again. So we thought it didn't even make sense to do a referendum. It was just speculation. I understand why they are doing it, of course. But we, we, we really saw that it was already enough. Uh, it had already had uh, the, the support of the population. Okay, so a couple of people are saying that if the constitution is tweaked to accommodate a third term for it could have been another president, but for now it is President Kagame that is there. What if after these seven years, President Kagame decides to go for another term. Does that mean the constitution will be tweaked again? Right. I don't, I don't know. The term that you're using, I don't understand the meaning of it. You said tweaked. But this is a normal legal process as far as the court ruling is concerned. This is a very normal process of amending the constitution. That's, there's nothing illegal about it so far. And, and that's number one. No, number two... Even though the people are agitating for the constitution to be amended so that President Kagame can run again, he hasn't confirmed that he will run again. Right. And I am not able to tell you what will happen after this time. What I know is that from now on, the constitution, if amended, term limits will be waived. That is a permanent decision. I was interviewing the president of the second uh, biggest political party in Rwanda, PSD, and asked him his perspective. He said to me that he, he was happy that the constitution was being amended because then if they were to get in power, they would, they would benefit from the same right. advantages. Now, so, yes. Let me quickly put this to you. This is the first African country, supposedly, that has successfully altered the constitution legally to accommodate a third term bid. Do you see this become a trend in Africa? First of all, it's not really the first country. This happened in Uganda before, before Rwanda. Supposedly. But in Rwanda, this, all right, in Africa, it is a trend. It already is a trend. It's just that in some countries, it doesn't work as successfully as in others. Right. Uh, the president of the DRC tried uh, to initiate any, some process, and the response was quite strongly negative. The president of Burundi tried. Uh, well, did uh, stay in power, but you know the response. It's a full, fully, full-fledged uprising that we're experiencing in Uganda and in Burundi right now. So it is going to be a trend, nonetheless. But it's going to be fought by all sorts of people. Once again, it comes down to how the president delivers. I mean, Kagame. Um, people, people who are genuinely asking him to stay, and that's the majority of people are arguing that he's delivered uh, positively to their lives. Right, I, was arguing that, I was arguing that he should leave for legal and ideological purposes because I thought he was a human being and even if he delivered perfectly today, he won't be there the whole time. Otherwise, okay. if it was only up to how he has performed, he has indeed performed very well and, and I think that's what is going to be determining to other countries that will seek to amend. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you so much. Gatete Kevin, a Rwandan human rights lawyer who joined us from Belgium. Thank you so much. Yeah. We're coming up on Network Africa. Security forces in Algeria confirmed the death of a deadly terrorist operating in the eastern region.